Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, in today's video I'm going to go over the round 8 game from Zagreb Open uh, in which I faced a woman Fide Master uh, 2150 and the game was interesting uh, because of well preparation and I think mind games on my part I don't know if, if uh, she had considered any of that but yeah okay just to give you a brief intro uh, so I played in split open in uh, last summer and I'm pretty sure my opponent from this game uh, knows my opponent uh, an opponent I played in split who is a great guy by the way crushed me in the Prince Sicilian uh, and I think uh, she knew what I play and he helped her with with the prep now okay i don't want to go into too much detail but anyway uh, she usually with black plays the the e6 sicilian the french variations of the sicilian and i don't go into the main lines with d4 into the cans and taimanovs and whatever i play the kramnik variation with c4 and i didn't know if she knew that i played that but uh, the only other opening I'd expected from her was the French, even though I I couldn't expect it based on her games. I, I knew that she may play it because of my opponent from Split. Anyway, I may be wrong about all that, or I may have been wrong. Those are all just theories in my head, but helped me in the end. So, against the French, I played the Tarash French, Knight D2, almost always. Uh, I have been playing a weird variation of the exchange lately but uh, never in a tournament game let me just show you what i'm talking about so usually against the french uh, sorry uh, after d5 i'm going to play knight d2 the tarash and lately after d5 i've been playing this fun line with takes takes knight c3 the exchange with queenside castling which mate taught me and it's risky white is supposed to be equal or worse on move three on move four but it's fun and it's hard to defend for black. So when we uh, when we started playing, she played the French, and I I sort of was happy because even though there were no games of hers in the French in the database, I knew that that was the second most likely opening she could go for, and it made me happy that she played the French. And I'd actually prepared something uh, against it, so I went for the exchange. Uh, with e takes d5 e takes d5 i knew that she had most likely expected the tarash and then uh, the second thing she could have expected because there are some online uh, games of mine in the variation are knight c3 and i spent i don't know 10 minutes here <laughs> trying to decide what i was going to do and i went for the weird prep i did and i never expected to actually play this but i did play it so my prep was knight f3 which is the main move and knight f6 and now there are a million games with bishop to d3 which is the only good move in this position i prepared bishop e2 which makes no sense uh, and white is already slightly worse but it's not really clear why and let me tell you why i came up with this move in the first place it's very counterintuitive you're taking uh, a very passive diagonal you're not doing much and black, of course, is going to play bishop d6, which is the main move after bishop d3. But now it becomes harder for, for black to play bishop g4. It's harder to pin the knight because the bishop is an e2. While at the same time, uh, white gets to play bishop g5 and, and pin the f6 knight. So now if, if bishop g4, there are ideas like knight e5 and... The position is passive, especially the positioning of the bishop for white, but it sort of goes outside of the territory in the normal exchange French, which I wanted to do. Okay, so, and, and this I knew there was no way she could expect, and there was almost no way she could be prepared for. I, I, I don't think many French defense players have looked at bishop e2 on move 5. So here she continued with knight bd7, which is fine, castles, castles, knight bd2, and the engine it, the engine always wants white to go bishop d3 to waste the tempo, and I can understand that. I wanted to avoid that, I didn't want to move my bishop twice. I had a plan of going c3, queen c2, rook e1, and then maybe uh, bishop to d3. Here she played c6, which is 
fine, probably the best move. Uh, I could have played c3, but I went rook e1 first, rook e8, and now c3. And in this position, she went for the best plan. Of course, she, she has to open up her c8 bishop. In order to do that, she needs to move the knight. Knight b6 is a bad move, so knight f8. Uh, and knight f8 in conjunction with h6, bishop h4, knight g6, chasing my bishop away to g3, is a very strong threat. So, okay, after knight f8, I have to parry two threats. The first one is bishop f5. If I allow bishop f5, I'm incredibly worse and probably losing because I have no square for my bishop. I don't have time for queen c2. I obviously can't play bishop d3 or queen c2 either. And I have to react to that. So I either have to play bishop d3 or queen c2. In my mind, bishop d3 was an inferior move because that would uh, bring my queen to e1 or my knight, which neither of them seemed very good. So queen c2 was, in my mind, the only move. Now, here's the problem. If I play queen c2 to stop her main threat, then uh, h6, bishop h4, knight g6, bishop g3, knight f4 uh, become inevitable. And she went for that. Uh, okay, so h6. Uh, h6, I have to go bishop h4. Knight g6, I have to go bishop g3. And here she surprised me incredibly. Uh, I before queen c2 and even uh, before c3 and rook e1, I saw this position and I was sure she was going to play knight f4, and that's very. Uh, this position is hard for white to play because this knight is so dominant. So I have two options. I can either go bishop f1, or I can play bishop takes f4. Uh, I was going to take bishop takes f4. Uh, that that was the idea. Bishop takes f4, bishop f4, and bishop d3. So I was going to play this and this and bishop d3 and try to compensate for the bishop pair with the fact that most of my pawns are on dark squares. There, there isn't that much pressure on my king. I could always go h3, stopping knight g4. Queen h4 is then ineffective even if my knight moves. And I still play for the e5 square and do something like knight e5, bishop e5 if she takes d5, chasing the knight away, and then maybe e6 ideas, the other knight coming to f3 and stuff like that. So I didn't think this was so bad. After bishop g3, though, uh, she took on g3, which I just... Uh, after I took with the h-pawn, I thought white has to be better and the advantage has to be palpable now it has to be a real advantage instead of her having a slight edge now white should be better not a winning advantage but better why is that well simply because she is yet to develop her light squared bishop and i can then play bishop d3 with tempo on the g6 knight and the g6 knight has two squares uh, well two squares that make sense e7 and f8 h8 is horrible so, yeah, and d7 is bad because it blocks the e-file. So, basically, knight f8, knight f8 is forced. And if she doesn't develop the bishop now, what does she do? And she probably has to play bishop e6. Uh, that's the best move. Bishop e6, bishop d3. And now the knight is forced to go back, knight f8. And now we just increase the pressure with knight e5. That's probably the only move that makes sense. I want to go knight f3 with my d2 knight. And I want to go rook e2, rook a2, e1, and optimize all of my pieces and then try to create something. So in this position, I was looking at queen c7 or queen d6 for her. She needs to connect her rooks. I thought queen c7 was slightly better defending the b7 pawn in case I want to go queen b3 or something like that. She went queen d6. I went rook e2, she went b6, which I didn't really understand, and I didn't really like. Of course, the idea is c5, but you really want to play c5, and I, I didn't think she wanted to play c5. So I, I went rook a to e1, and in case c5 happens, the only thing I have to do is I need to move my queen away to give my bishop some luft, uh, because bishop f5 in this position, even though it seems like a good move, well, okay, we're going to see. So I was going to move my queen away either to b1 or to d1, probably to d1, and if c5, I was going to play bishop b1. And this position I thought was good for me. If uh, she, instead of c5, plays cd, then cd, let's say rook a to c8, knight f3, I'm, I'm very happy in this position. I think it's, it's nothing major, but white is better. But after rook a to e1, she went to bishop d7, which I thought was a very weird move, especially after b6. Uh, and maybe she was afraid of something like queen b3 uh, and then knight c6, queen c6, bishop 
b5, but I don't think that's a threat. And I think bishop d7 is just a waste of time. Uh, maybe she wanted to trade pieces off, so if knight d7, then knight fd7, and then she can try to occupy uh, the e file or trade off the rooks. So rook e2, rook e2, rook e8, defended by the f8 knight. In any case, bishop d7 seemed like an invitation into an equal position for me. She probably knew that she was slightly worse, so I, that's understandable. So in this position, I was trying to come up with a plan, and I couldn't. I just couldn't find something good. The, the most logical move, knight d to f3. Uh, how do I make progress? That was the, that was the issue. And I couldn't see a way to make progress unless I, unless I bring my queen into the game and eventually go knight h4, knight f5. So that is what I thought would give me an edge. Uh, in this position, I'm not even sure what she plays. I'm expecting, I would expect something like maybe rook e6. Because if then knight d7, she can recapture with the f knight and still, even though the e pawn is coming to the middle, I think this is not such a big issue because she has e5. A rook e7, of course, would uh, would lose the rook to knight. Oh, okay. Or it wouldn't. Uh, rook e7, do I have a good discovery? I probably do. I would play knight c4 and then rook e2, knight d6, rook e1, knight e1. And I would win material and the game. So rook e7 loses. But what else? I mean, maybe rook a to c8. That's a normal move, preparing c5. And now what do I do again? How do I make progress? So I was trying to make something work, and they came up with this move, bishop f5. Which, if she'd played c5, I was going to move my queen away to not be forced to play bishop f5. But at this point, it seemed like a good move. And after bishop f5, I realized that after bishop takes f5, which she played, queen takes f5, and rook e6, the position is now just equal. I just gave away my chance to to control the e-file and she's going to play rook e8 next and there's there's nothing i can do about that and i now at this point i just didn't see any advantage for white uh, i had some ideas of going g4 but i don't think that's anything major so even if i achieve this i don't know as soon as knight d7 comes i'm probably in trouble the thing is that by giving away my bishop, I gave away the e4 square, meaning that I don't have knight f3, and that was what I hated about bishop f5. So bishop f5 uh, takes queen f5. I never have knight f3. Let's say uh, in this position she played rook e6. If I go knight f3, which I obviously want to play, then knight e4, and perfectly equal. She can now go knight e7, knight f6. So after rook e6, I played what I thought was the best move, even though I knew it was going to be a draw. And I offered the draw, uh, and that's that's it. Uh, she accepted because the position is now just dead even. Symmetrical pawn structure. Okay, I have double G pawns, but that doesn't really matter. We're, we are about to trade some pieces off. Neither of us is going to be controlling the E file, and it should be, should be just a dead draw. So the game wasn't that interesting. What was interesting was the prep and the my reasoning about or on what I was going to play and what I was going to, what I expected from her. So I think my prep was fairly successful. I accepted having a slightly worse position for, for the element of surprise, and I think I've succeeded. Okay, uh, tomorrow I'm going to go over the last game uh, from Zagreb, in which I faced the Grandmaster. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think about this. Let me know what you think about Bishop E2 on move 5 in the exchange French. And if you've ever faced it, I would appreciate any opinion uh, from experienced French defense players. And thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.